What does it mean to the narcissist when you go silent? That's what I'm covering today. Let's do it. Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. If it's your first time here, my name is Tammy M. Joyce. I'm the founder of Tammy M. Coaching and the creator of the Freedom Class and the Ascension Class. Please take a second to say hello and introduce yourself in the comments section below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss a new video. So what does it mean to the narcissist when you go silent? What kind of message does it send? Well, in my view, it's at the very least an excellent way to go if you're dead serious about getting rid of them. If you actually want to rid yourself of all of the pain, drama, and trauma that the narcissist brings to the table of the relationship once and for all, few things will be as effective as complete radio silence. When it comes to losing a narcissist for good, the power of silence is often underestimated and it can actually be your best friend and most powerful weapon as well as being a very effective self-care strategy. Make no mistake friends, choosing to not engage with a toxic person is an act of self-love and self-care. Not always easy, I know, but when you're able, more often than not, it's gonna be your best bet. And keep in mind that when we're talking about people who land on the spectrum of destructive narcissism, we are quite literally talking about people who are energy vampires. That's fundamentally what's going on when you're enmeshed in or working to break free from a relationship with a narcissistic person. And this is never more true than when you're an empath with little to no codependency recovery under your belt. You feel completely drained and depleted and quite frankly, it's because you are. The reality is narcissistic people thrive on intensity, drama, emotional chaos, as well as your fear, pain, anxiety, confusion, and discomfort, which is precisely why they smirk with such smug satisfaction anytime they succeed in upsetting you. When they know they can affect you this way, you're a good target an excellent source of narcissistic supply. And what ensues is fully vampiric behavior. Narcissists will poke, provoke, and deliberately bait you, whether that be passively or aggressively, in order to elicit an emotional reaction so they can then literally feed off of that negative emotional energy. They'll go out of their way to manufacture an intense high voltage reaction if you let them, and then proceed to feed off of your reactivity just like a demonic entity would. And if you want to fully understand narcissistic baiting, specifically how it works and what you can do to avoid taking the bait, then you'll want to watch this video here. Suffice to say, your intense emotional reaction to the ways they enjoy provoking you is what serves as a source of narcissistic supply for the narcissist. Again, they quite literally feed off of your intense negative emotions. Negative emotions they themselves provoke with deliberate and malevolent intent. So, just like the demonic feeds off of the pain and suffering of the human race, and quite frankly, other sentient beings as well, destructive narcissists operate in the very same way. And let's not kid ourselves, there is a connection, friends. People who go through life deliberately committing serious relationship crimes, again, no matter how passively or aggressively that might be, going out of their way to bait and provoke, going out of their way to upset you, going out of their way to cause you discomfort, harm, or serious pain, while stirring up all manner of chaos, trauma, and drama, so they can then literally siphon the vital life force from your very being, this kind of thinking and behaving is not only a clear indication of a person having high narcissistic traits, it is fully demonstrative of a destructive narcissist's personality pattern. And this includes, by the way, their astonishing sense of entitlement and colossal lack of empathy. So, with all of that said, suffice to say, when you go silent on a narcissist, and not in a passive-aggressive, game-playing, attention-seeking way, the way the narcissist uses the silent treatment to punish, manipulate, control, or hurt you. I don't mean like that. What I mean is, when you go silent from a place of absolute certainty and clarity, or as close to it as you can manage, even if that's simply sheer determination to finally choose better for yourself, when you go silent from a place of courage, confidence, strength, and clearly communicate in that way that the narcissist is absolutely insignificant and is of no consequence to you, when you have that kind of attitude,
When you go silent from that place with solid boundaries in place, completely certain in a way that communicates that there is no narcissistic supply to be had here, when you go silent in that way and have absolute dominion over your emotional state, sovereign in who you are, calm, cool, collected, and detached, again, sending a message that says there is nothing to be had here, and you hold that posture consistently, reliably, and predictably for an extended period of time, what you are doing is quite literally starving the narcissist to death, emotionally and energetically. You are quite literally starving them of the one thing they need to feel alive, significant. What they require in order to know that they matter in some way, in any way, to you. You starve them out. You starve them of what they've been feeding off of, your vital life force energy, until you finally decide it's time to take better care of yourself and cut off their source of supply. Now, when you're able to sustain this posture of silence for a period of time, it's game over. Maybe not immediately, but the longer and more consistently you hold the line, the longer you give them nothing, not a word or reaction, the sooner they will be forced to go elsewhere to get their sick needs met and you'll be left in peace, which is what you want, right? I promise you, you don't need the last word. You don't need to be right. You're not going to get through to them no matter what you say. Furthermore, and perhaps even most importantly for you to understand, is that they are not going to change. So if what you're after is peace, if what you ultimately want is happy, healthy, loving relationships with good, kind people who do not feel entitled to hurt you and then blame you for the hurt they cause, silence is absolutely the fastest way to get there. That and commit to your own healing and recovery work so you stop repeating this pattern. That is what gets the job done and changes the game for good. And if you need help with any of that, you're likely an excellent candidate for one of my coaching programs. There's a link in the description below this video where you can apply to see if you qualify for a free one-on-one -on -one consultation with either myself or a member of my team. In addition, there's also a brand new free gift section in the description below this video as well, so be sure to avail yourself of that. Here's the thing. Few things are more powerful than treating a narcissist as if they are literally dead to you. Literally. They do not matter. They don't even exist. You don't see them. They're not on your radar. You're busy living your life, taking good care of yourself, meeting your own needs in healthy ways with healthy and sane others. And you have no time, zero time for the nonsense. Literally cut and cauterize so they can no longer exploit you emotionally, energetically, or otherwise, which forces them to have to go elsewhere to get their fix. And again, the good news about this is they leave you in peace. Maybe not right away, but certainly soon enough. Once they realize there is no longer anything to be had from you. And the truth is they may circle back for a while to test the waters and figure out just how serious you are. You know, check back in to see if you're suffering from codependent amnesia and whether or not they can worm their way back into your life and suck you back into the abuse cycle one more time. In other words, you may have to communicate you're dead to me, that stance, repeatedly before they start taking you seriously and go find another target. But I promise you this, treating a narcissist to a healthy dose of, I don't even see you, you don't matter one iota to me, Communicating that they are completely and utterly insignificant to you is absolutely the fastest way to be rid of them. And I know this is a tough thing for those of you who are still in the people-pleasing approval-seeking mode. I spent many years there myself, so I get it. Before doing our own healing and recovery work, this can be hard, in particular if we're caught up in trying to get our needs met from people who fully do not have what it takes to meet those needs. People who do not have any genuine love, validation, or approval to give. People who are an emotional and energetic match to our unresolved wounding and trauma. And of course, as full-blown empaths, we want to be nice, polite, kind, loving, compassionate people. And from a place of untreated codependency, we'll often be those things to our own detriment, forgetting that we are our number one responsibility and priority. So how about we pour some love and care onto ourselves first? How about we spend some time loving and respecting ourselves first? 
What if we were to do that first? And while we're doing that, how about we remember who and what it is that we're dealing with when we're talking about lying, deceiving, highly manipulative individuals who land on the spectrum of destructive narcissism. No matter how empathic you are or well-intended you are, these people do not understand kind, sincere, genuine, or polite for that matter. It doesn't land. It doesn't even put a dent in what's going on with them. So although I am all about coming from a place of love and compassion while carrying the highest frequencies that we can manage, of course we want to be positive, kind, loving, compassionate, sincere, and genuine. But the truth be told, in the realm of destructive narcissism, please remember who you're dealing with. How far has kind, sincere, and polite gotten you with this type of individual so far? I'm guessing not very far. More than likely, all it's done is invited more mistreatment and abuse. So again, remember who and what it is that you're dealing with. Nice, kind, polite doesn't work with narcissistic people if your goal is to be rid of them permanently. If you think that your kind, compassionate, loving, forgiving nature is going to get you anywhere in the dynamic with a destructive narcissist, you're lying to yourself and you know it. Silence is the most powerful weapon you can use to communicate what it is that you need to communicate to a destructive narcissist, to move them out of your experience and into another realm so that you can get yourself back on track to living the life you actually came to the planet to live which I promise you has nothing to do with having a destructive narcissist destroying your sanity and your life, manufacturing all manner of negative emotion, pain, drama, etc., and siphoning your vital life force energy from your very soul while they're at it. That's not why you came here. Now, despite outward appearances, narcissists are people who are fundamentally lacking in any real, authentic, or genuine personal power. So don't let the false persona fool you. Underneath the mask, I assure you, there is no genuine, authentic substance going on with these people. So, for that reason, relationships with narcissists are always going to be about power, dominance, and control. Dominating you, whether that be overtly or covertly, controlling you, controlling outcomes, manipulating and controlling perceptions, and they do this by working to control the narrative as well as controlling not just how others see you, but also how others perceive them. Now, that said, once they realize they can no longer control you, they will, as I said, work to overtime to control how others see you, what others think of you, and how others feel about you. As the old saying goes, be careful what you hear about others, you might be hearing it from the problem, right? So, never underestimate a narcissist in this regard. They'll be willing to say whatever it takes, whatever narrative they believe serves their own agenda. And their agenda might very well be to simply turn everyone they know against you. So be prepared for that in advance and stay clear within yourself with regard to what you can and cannot control while also exercising extreme self-care. Do not spend much time or energy trying to convince anyone of your truth, your experience, or your value. People who really know you, people who genuinely love or care about you, should be onto this nonsense pretty quickly. And if they aren't, if they're choosing to believe the negative narrative, choosing to be the narcissist enabling little minion, we have to get ourselves to a place where we're gonna be okay regardless. And I'm not saying this is necessarily easy or that it's going to be pain free, but this is one of the amazing side effects of actually doing our own personal healing and recovery work. We become bulletproof in the face of this kind of nonsense, able to rise above whatever lies or smear campaigns may be going on and ultimately, believe it or not, we can become pretty unaffected in the face of the narcissist antics. And if you're not there yet, that's okay. Naturally it hurts to have the people that we know and love believe things about us that aren't true. But I promise you, silence can and will be your best friend in this scenario. The truth is, the smear campaign is all the narcissist has left once you go silent on them. And it's all they've got to cling to for some false sense of power and control over you and the situation. And narcissists are desperate for power and control. So, needless to say, no lie is too great, no tale is too tall, and they'll say whatever it takes. So when you go silent, be prepared to be smeared. You can pretty much count on it. And you have no control over that. So, 
focus on what you can control and go take really, really good care of yourself so you can find yourself ultimately in a much happier and better place. Learn to rest in the knowledge that the people who genuinely love us, care about us, who are worth having in our lives, in our circle, they're at the very least going to give us the benefit of the doubt, if not the benefit of a conversation. They'll want to hear your side of the story. And as for those who are so easily swayed by the destructive narcissist and their toxic gossip, anyone who is so easily swayed by all that nonsense, you don't really want them in your life anyway. Good riddance. Grieve the losses, and again, go take good care of yourself. The truth is, you deserve better, much better, and no one's gonna give it to you until you do. It's time now. And on that note, I'm gonna call it a wrap, but before I go, you should know that the Ascension class is open for enrollment. Now, this is for you if you're ready and able to invest in yourself. You're ready to shift your identity, master the law of attraction, heal your relationship with money, and put a full stop end to the limiting beliefs and self-sabotaging behaviors that are holding you back and preventing you from living your best life. If you're ready to reinvent yourself from the inside out, create your dream life by design, and finally become the you you were always meant to be, click the link on the description below and apply to see if you qualify for a free one-on-one -on -one consultation with either myself or a member of my team.